Hi, my name is Newton Chatta, and I'm with DLA Public Affairs. And this is the DLA Wrap. This is your opportunity to get to know DLA people and DLA programs on a more personal level. Today, my special guest is Chief Master Sergeant Al Dyer. Hi, Chief. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you for having me today. So for everybody, tell us your official title here at DLA. So I'm the command senior enlisted leader for the Defense Logistics Agency. And my role in here is to be the eyes and ears for the director. And the other thing is I want us to be ready. Our readiness is always at the top of my thoughts. For those of us who don't know, at your level, at your rank, when you know you have to go to another assignment, do you apply to other assignments? I got nominated from the Air Force to interview for this position. And there were four other candidates, one from each of the other services to include myself as well. And I actually did get an interview from Admiral Schilbert. A couple of days later, she called me and said, hey, I want to hire you to come be my teammate at DLA. So how long have you served in the Air Force so far? Ooh, I'm at 27 years right now. And it looked like just yesterday I joined. I remember raising my right hand, and here I am 27 years later still serving. Where did you grow up, and what were you like as a child? So I hail from Memphis, Tennessee, home of the blues, home of barbecue. As a child, I was into a lot of different things. I was really into sports, uh, really into music. What were your aspirations as a child? Did you know you wanted to join the military? And how did you happen to join? So as a child, um, believe it or not, I wanted to be an architect. But a year before I graduated, my brother joined the Air Force. And I remember hearing his stories while he was in. He was stationed overseas at the time. I remember hearing all the things that he was you know, enjoying about the Air Force. Uh, so as time started to come around for me to make a decision, I actually uh, got in touch with a recruiter, uh, Tech Sergeant Snyder, still remember his name, and uh, we started having some dialogue about what it would be like to be in the organization. Um, so then you know, things started to progress along the way, and then eventually I um, signed up. Tell me about your father. Did your father serve in the military? And, and tell me about that. Uh, so my father, he actually was drafted and actually did not finish high school. So he actually ended up getting drafted, going to Germany, and finished his high school degree there. Uh, served some time in Vietnam, and then eventually after his service, he came back home. His time in the, in the Army was uh, a lot different. You can imagine it was late 60s, uh, early 70s is when he joined in, and then being drafted and not being a volunteer, it was a little bit different for him. Uh, he rarely talked about his experiences in, in being in the Army, um, but he would always say, I wish my experience in the Army was that of what you experienced in the Air Force. He must have been really proud of you as you started to grow in your career. Before he passed in 2019, I remember going to his house and there is a bio uh, what we have that tells you about your entire career. He actually had it in a frame. So when everybody uh, come over to the house, they could see that bio of me. And it was really, really sobering to hear to see that. Who have been some of your mentors? My dad, he was a great mentor. I've had several, several supervisors, um, both good and bad, that kind of mentor me. And, and I think that's important to know because some people can mentor you and them not know it in a negative way and you turn it around and make it positive. Without naming a name, can you, can you share something where it was a negative experience that you have spun into a positive experience? Yeah, so my very first uh, supervisor, uh, and, and I tell people, it wasn't a bad supervisor. It was just absent. So I was kind of left out to do things on my own. And eventually, um, I got to the point where I was taking my, what we call our career development course. 
And I remember flunking that test. When I tell you flunking, it was bombed. But it really woke me up to realize that some of this, I gotta do on my own. I have to make sure I'm doing this to better myself. Is there a story or two you can share that's really stuck with you, or, you know, when you were overseas in a deployment? I remember um, I had uh, one organization that I was a part of in this deployment where uh, first encounter I met this airman and inside my office I always have a Tennessee flag. And I remember him coming in and him making an immediate comment on my flag saying, oh, your team, you know, is not as good as they used to be and, you know, they got to do better. And I remember the look on my face thinking, wow, is this our introduction? I remember getting so upset at myself thinking like, why are he is, you know, why is he introducing himself like this? And I went TDY and I remember getting a phone call from my wing commander boss at the time. And he says, um, just want to let you know, sad news, that airman so-and-so has cancer, stage four, and is pretty aggressive. So he's in the hospital right now. And before I could get back, my boss told me that they're sending him home to South Carolina because the cancer got that aggressive. And about a week later, he passed. And I remember thinking, my only encounter that I had with him was that of a negative one. And I remember thinking I would never let my admiration of my team be bigger than somebody's life. So every time I have any encounter with somebody, it's always this could be my last. Not this is my first, but this could be my last. And I want them to remember it in a great way, and I want to remember it in a great way. What advice do you give to young people who are thinking about joining the military, any of the services? And is there any sp special or specific advice you give to young African-American males or females about you know, joining the workforce or joining the military? I think the biggest thing I always tell people is uh, know who you are as a person first. You got to learn who you are. As for the young you know, African-American uh, males and females out there, I know some of them come from difficult places, but coming to you know, the military or coming to the, the institutions that we serve as servants of the American public, just realize it's bigger than you. And being part of something so special will bring out the best in you. But it doesn't come without trials. It doesn't come without some heartaches and pains. And I always use this term, pull as you climb. Uh, as you continue to you know, get success, pull somebody. What do you do for fun? I am a gym rat. I love to get out and work out. I work out every single day. So believe it or not, working out is pretty fun for me. I love music. And do you have do you have kids? I got two beautiful kids. I got my son Christian, who is uh, 24, and my daughter Cassidy, who is 19. What is your message to Team DLA? My message to Team DLA is I'm here to learn. I'm here to learn from everyone in the organization. So now for just some fun questions, and fun. this is, this is just answering. One word answer, right. two word answer. Introvert or extrovert? Extrovert. Favorite sports team? Tennessee Volunteers. Favorite sport? I love to watch football. I love to play basketball. What are the top three songs that you listen to on your playlist? So I listen to John Coltrane, My Favorite Things. It's probably one I listen to quite a bit. I listen to William Murphy, Everlasting Love. And maybe another one is Run DMC, Walk This Way. 
Thank you so much for being my guest today on the DLA Wrap. And I want to thank all of you for joining us today. Until next time, have a great day.